I mean, are we serious about Courtney? Really? Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Floss time for my Bachelorette recap. We're doing episodes something and something. Um, the numbers are on the cap. You know what they are. Let's get to it. Okay, on Wednesday night's episode, we had the second one on one with Lee. Oh, Lee, you beautiful specimen of a man. The date itself, Georgia took Lee to a lake pond somewhere, and I think there was a whole lot chopped out, but basically they were doing movie moments that were... Georgia loves a romantic movie, and they were going to recreate a few key scenes. Anyway, the key moment of the first part of the date was that they were going to recreate the lift from Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had safety guy come in and explain the mechanics of a lift, which is fine. And then they tried. And it was good and they did it and it was beautiful. And oh my god, first of all, Georgia, core strength girl. That is a lot to hold that up. That's impressive. But also, Lee, damn! That black t-shirt, the, the definition, the muscles, the lifting, it's all there. Well, well, everything. Then they had a little passion, it was lovely. And as you can see, Lee really took the moment to get close and kind of like, not only were they passion, but there was physical lower to lower body contact. Good sign in my book, good sign. Then they went on to the second part, the evening part, or the couch and wine part of the date, which is, sort of happens on every date. He says beautifully, he's into her. He also does it while his glasses come out again and make a full, sexy, intelligent, hot, like teacher, librarian, accountant kind of feel going on there. I was into it. Georgia, very into it. Although there's part of me that still thinks with Lee that Georgia almost doesn't feel like she deserves him, like he's too hot for her. I don't know, it's just a weird vibe I get from her whenever she's sort of... Yeah, she doesn't seem as relaxed with him as she does sometimes with other people. Maybe to her detriment, as we see, because her taste in men can be sometimes terrible. The second part of Wednesday Night's Date was the god-awful singing thing that they were doing. And this is sort of that weird date right before the hometown stuff where they kind of have to have a group date and we have to do something weird and wacky, but no one really wants to because everyone's like, can we just get to the serious part of it? And it's just, just not good. Uh, they all had to write a song because Georgia was, I think, pissed at that rose ceremony where they sang to her and so inexplicably thought the song was good and so that we should do that again. So the guys paired up into little teams and um, wrote little verses to go into this bigger song about uh, it's the journey to the final rose or something like that. I don't know. It wasn't. I have tried to wipe it from my mind and don't anyone tell me in the comments because I don't care. Lee can't sing for shit. Sorry, my darling, precious, beautiful butterfly Lee, you cannot sing. But even in his cannot singing, he displayed a charming sense of awareness about it and fun and kind of dad can't really do it, but looks incredibly hot while failing terribly at a thing. It's a skill that more people should have. Yeah, Jake and Maddie J do a kind of rap. Yeah, white. Never seen a whiter rap in my life. It was really white. Then we had Cam and Georgia sing together. It was fine. Again, no one can sing. I don't know why we're doing this. They then heard the track back from the producer who had auto-tuned it to with an inch of its life so that no one really could hear their own voices and they all pretended that it sounded good. It didn't. It didn't sound good. Rose Ceremony on Wednesday night, Georgia then sits down and has a conversation with Courtney where in which he continues to do the Courtney dance of I uh, kind of like you, but I'm not really sure, but I can't really talk about it, but you seem really into me, so I know I've got this routine. So he kind of ums and ahs and hems and haws, and Georgia is starting to see the alarm bells, but she's not listening to the alarm bells. She decides to go and pick Courtney at the road of Samurai instead of Cam, so Cam gets booted. Georgia, why? Why? Why would you do that? What? The fireman. We didn't even get to have a hometown, as someone rightly pointed out on Twitter, at the fire station. So, of course, in his exit, Cam continues to show what a champion, nice, legendary guy he is and actually stands out there with the umbrella in the rain and gives her a few key phrases of encouragement and support about looking after herself. He was a good guy! We're fine. It's all fine. Perth women, congratulations. Cam's back in your neighbourhood. We get to hometowns and we go straight into the date with Maddie J. Maddie J and his sister Kate. Sister Kate Apparently, he, Maddie J and his sister are close, almost a little too close for my liking in terms of it was just, Kate was just all over the fact that she needed Maddie J in her life. I mean, I feel like she was kind of like the whole sister thing going, he's, I've had a child, I need him to be an uncle. I'm like, are you just pissed off that you're going to lose your Friday night babysitter? Is that what's going on, Kate? Because 
I'm an auntie and I don't appreciate that status. I have a life too, man. But she gets right into Georgia about not only that she could drag him off to Melbourne, the devil child Melbourne, but that also the fact that she should have babies. She should have them right now. Georgia, all hail Georgia, goes, no, I'm not ready to have children. I am not in that position yet. And it's a little bit too soon for me. Good friends on her own timeline. She is not a baby machine. Step back. So that was their date. It was sweet at the farewell on the porch. Nanny J and Georgia had a little farewell. And yeah, they came, that's good. That chemistry is still strong. That patch was, was sweet and lovely. And I think both of them were seconds away from saying, I'm in love with you, I'm in love with you. That's real. We then went to Jake's house where we went straight to Jake's home and he made a cook. He made a cook the family turkey meal. So she made, she had to work for her meal and then they went and had a bit of booze on the beach. Um, talked about how they both had very similar situations with the home life in terms of their mothers being ill or having had been ill. We, go, we then meet Jake's family and Jake's family continue round two of this person cannot live away from the city they live in and you, what are your intentions with my son? Um, it's all very... Uh, Accusatorial is the word I would use. Everyone seems to love Georgia, but the tone of the first two dates especially were like, don't take him away from us. He must live here all the time and we have to have this boy in our life. And again, I say, Skype, Facebook, phone calls, pigeons, planes, modern forms of transportation and any kind of mail messaging carrying service works. All right, people? I do think that when asked about her feelings for Jake, Georgia has trouble justifying. I think she likes him a lot. I think he's great. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ready to call my top three and I think Jake's going to be the next to go. We then, we had a date with Lee. Go oh, back to Lee. I may have really tried to look at his Melbourne home and see where it was in case he doesn't win and I might have to go and stalk his house. If you see me outside your home with a deck there tomorrow, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Lee, I apologise. I'm very nice. I'd make an excellent daughter-in-law. Just saying. Lee brought her flowers. Thank you, Lee. Gave her a bunch of roses. Good boy. No real problems. Uh, the dinner itself was with Lee's. The two women, again, the women who were who were after Georgia were his mum and his grandma. Grandma, Grandma Lee, the Gma, she on it. She was nailing the questions out, popping them out. And because she was a grandma, she was getting away with some cheeky, cheeky barbs. Again, Georgia responded well. She held up to questioning. She answered what she could and said that, you know, I'm not quite ready to have a family straight away. Slow down, I just met your son. And then she had the same similar conversation with mum. The only thing came out that Lee has a bit of a Richie Strawn preference for, for the blondes. And that Georgia is the first brunette. It's not a big deal. I mean, it was made to seem like it was a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's fine. They had a nice little farewell as well. It all seems to be going well there. Then we get to Courtney. Courtney's hometown day. So first of all, they go to the beach and they go to the beach and already even walking into the day, Georgia is full of questions and she wants to have a chat and be serious. Courtney's got games to play, both metaphoric and literal. So they go to the beach and they do a stupid run and the, catch the get the flag stick thing that you have to die for. Georgia almost knocks herself out. They then sit down on the beach where she tries to sort of say to him, hey, what can we can we lock down your feelings a bit more can we can we get a little bit more than just a kind of a maybe ish oh i don't know no he was all like oh i'm a thinker i think deep thoughts i don't rush into these things i'm friends with women and i before i fall in love with them and i don't really know if i've fallen in love with anyone before and i don't know what love is and i'm sorry Courtney, if that's the way you feel you don't apply for the bachelorette it is a fast burn fall in love fast kind of show idiot which clearly states that you were in no way ready to fall in love. You were here solely for the for the fame and acclaim and the popularity and notoriety. So, Courtney. Anyway, she decides after this car trash of a conversation that no, she needs to go to the family's home because although the, it went badly, maybe he'll redeem himself at dinner. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. It gets worse. They go to dinner, they sit down with the family. His siblings were there, they chatted back and forth. It was all good. And then Courtney, his brother says, hey, how, how you feeling about the whole thing? What's going on? And he kind of goes, I don't know, sit down, what do you think? Um, and his brother goes, yeah, you look really, you look really tired. You look really worn out. And he's like, yep, I am tired. And like, George is just in there going, are, are, you, are you kidding me? Are you like, this is serious? Um, it is bananas. She is then asked by the siblings as well about her feelings and is very clearly saying, I'm laying it out for you to help me. Like, you know, this is how I feel. I can't speak for, for your brother. 
And that's the time when you jump in and say, hey, I feel good things about her too. Nothing. Silence. <laughs> Courtney shut down like a robot. So then she goes out to talk to his brother and have a bit of a chat and he basically reinforces the thing that Courtney is just in his own head all the time, can't commit to an emotion, is a bit of a fear, commitment phobe, and no. Um, so I was like, call her a taxi, go home. Don't even go inside to say goodbye. Just be like, text him and say I've left. Clearly not interested. No, she goes inside for a stand outside for another round of, please we could communicate more and emotionally commit to any kind of feeling, whether it's on or off, and Courtney going, oh, no, not really, but I'll kiss you to shut you up. We then, instead of a final rose, Georgia dresses up as a rose, goes out to meet Courtney in the cocktail ceremony thing by herself and there's no other guys there and clearly she's coming to say hey this is this is it it's on the line mate commit or get away get you know get on the tracks or get off they have another version of the same conversation in which she kind of says i really need you to step up for me and i'm not asking you to marry me i'm just asking you to be a bit more invested because we're down to the final three and you need to be committed to this man it's in it's in or out time and he kind of goes well, I want to be in, but I'm kind of out, and that should be enough because you've always really liked me before, so what? Georgia, my girl, finally sees the light of day and says, pack it, leave it, get out of my sight. I am too good for you, I am too good for this, I don't deserve this shit, get out of my place. He actually has the gall to look a little shocked and a little bit like, oh, oh, I thought I'd, you know, oh, surprise, I didn't get to go to the overseas trip. Bummer. Yeah, you don't, Courtney. Tell it walking. Tell it walking. All right, it's time for the final three roses. The first rose goes to my fireman cam. Oh my God. I know you should have got a hometown date. Only be, not only because you're a sexy fireman and we would have got to go to the firehouse, but because you actually communicated your feelings, you were invested in the process, you were sweet and lovely, you put up with bad singing and you tried to sing along, and you're just lovely and charming and nice. And every girl deserves one like you, so, as I said before, Perth women, congratulations. My second rose goes to my glasses boyfriend, Lee. Spectacles together? <laughs> no, look, I, I actually really like Lee for a number of reasons, not just because he's incredibly attractive, but also because I actually do quite like the sensitiveness to him. He's this sort of male model person-y kind of guy. Um, and I think people sort of look at him that way, but it also compared to the bro-ish behavior of say the Sams and the douches of Reese, and even Jake at times had that kind of wingman to the bro feel to him um and i just i thought you know lee seems like a really nice guy who's just a bit more quietly softly spoken and my third rose it does actually go to georgia for finally finally realizing that courtney was dicking you around and you deserved better you finally saw the light and realized that you couldn't put up with the on off maybe if i won't when i will i can i can i can't game and sent him packing. So this is what I like to call my packing rose. Well played. Well played. All right, people, hit the comments, sound off below about Courtney, about Cam, about it all. I know you've already started to on last week's recap. Now is the chance to go for it on, on, on all of this this week. And who are most excited about, and I dare you, place a bet for who's gonna win. Don't, if you've read spoilers, don't tell us that you've read the spoilers or whatever. I don't think there are actual fun, like who won spoilers out there, but I know there are final two spoilers out there. Who would you want to date? Who do you think is good for Georgia? They can be two different people. And we'll see you next week for the fun.